All right, uh, I'm going to shoot a video here about uh, making some measurements with this instrument. This is the Keithley 2400 source meter. It is both a power supply and a DVM built into one package. So you can uh, measure voltage and current. You can also measure ohms, um, but you can source voltage and current. So you can measure things like diodes. You could force a current and measure a voltage or force a voltage and measure a current. And that's what kind of the, 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 the magic of this box is to do things like that. And um, while those things are cool on the front panel, um, it's nice to automate this thing. So that's what, what I'm going to do. I'll show you how I did that um, on the back. Let's see if I can flip this around. Let me flip down the handle here. So I can look at the back. Sorry, it's a bit crooked. Okay, let's see here. All right, and on the back we have um, ways to input uh, and output voltage from the front panel or either from the back panel. Um, we have some handshaking signals called uh, output enable, so you can safeguard this thing. I think it's capable of putting out 200 volts, so it's a bit dangerous. So you can have interlocks and stuff on the output enable, make sure it's not you could have like a, a, a cover on your test equipment with a switch and the output can't enable itself unless the switch is closed, which is how that's used. Um, there's a trigger, um, never, never used that. And then there's two ways of programming this thing, either IEEE 488 or RS-232. So we're gonna use the RS-232, it's much easier. Um, and that's all you need to know. Got the beater back on the bench here. We'll power it up. So model 2400. Um, so before we can use this thing um, externally, we need to configure it correctly. So we hit the menu button. Uh, Communication, we'll arrow over to that, hit enter. Uh, communication setup is uh, GPIB or RS-232. Right now it's defaulting to GPIB, so we'll come over here to RS-232, enter. And the device is resetting itself and putting it into RS-232 mode. Uh, there we go, it says RS-232 mode on the front panel. Uh, we'll go back to the communication setup, RS-232, baud rate, bits, parity, and terminator. So let's see how this thing's set up. It's set up to 19200, uh, eight data bits, uh, no parity, and terminator is carriage return. So there we go really all we need. Flow control. Uh, flow control is none. Set it to X on, X off, or, uh, or none. So 19200. All right. So let's uh, go over to a computer, uh, hook up the COM port, and uh, see if we can't program this thing. Okay, we've uh, come here to uh, Device Manager. Uh, looking at our USB serial is set to COM4. Uh, we we'll do the port settings. Uh, we are at 19.2, 8 bits, no parity, stops, flow controls, none. Okay. Okay, we are hooked up, RS-232, power's on. We have a uh, connection here to the uh, input-output. And uh, that is going to a device under test. And that device under test is right here. It's a diode. Um, and all it is is a blue diode. And so we will go over and uh, turn on a program and see if we can get it to run. Okay, we have MATLAB here. I'll run my program IV, which is source current measure voltage. And it doesn't work.
no COM4. Now, now I got to figure out why there's no COM4. I'm going to unplug the USB, plug it back in. We'll come over here to Device Manager. Device Manager says there are no COM ports. Interesting. Why are there no COM ports? Ah, there they are. So I unplugged the USB cable on in and out. I don't know why it wasn't working, but now there's a COM port, COM port 4. Make sure it's set correctly again. 19200, everything looks good. All right, let's go back. IV. Ah, it worked. So um, it measured currents between uh, 5 milliamps and 100 milliamps and measured the current forward voltage of the diode. So uh, at low currents, it's measuring about 3 volts and at high currents, measuring about 3.5 volts. So there we go. Let me, uh, let me put the, uh, let me zoom out a bit here. And let me turn the room lights on so you can see what's going on. Come on, there we go. So I have the LED right down here at the bottom uh, with the clip leads on it. I think you can see that. And now when I do VI, you can see the LED turned on for a brief time and there we go. Um, so uh, I think we can walk through this program. Uh, I'll probably do it with the screen capture program so it looks a little bit nicer. And uh, I'll show you how I, how I wrote this program. Okay. So this is the uh, IV program. So this is forcing a current measuring a voltage. This is the blue LED. So blue LEDs come on around 2.8 2 volts and they go up to 3.5 volts. <coughs> And that was the blue LED. Um, here's a green LED. Let's measure that one. And the green is 2 to 2.8 volts. All right. Let's take a look at the yellow LED. And the yellow one goes from about 2 to 2.2. And should be pretty similar to the red one, I would guess. Oh, red one's much lower. 1.8 to 2. Okay, so that's uh, forcing a current measuring the voltage. I'll give you a quick look at the program here. Um, it's not the friendliest program. So we set a max current and a max voltage, and then it divides all of that in 16 steps. And then it talks to the Keithley 2400 over the RS-232. Uh, RS There's a reset, clear. It sets up a measurement for trace. So the 2400, instead of just doing a four next loop of um, force measure, force measure, force measure, you can actually tell it, I'm gonna make a series of measurements and you tell it how many and you tell it what range and it automatically does the whole set of measurements for you. And then you just read it out. So that all of this is setting up things. So I'm setting up uh, line 25, I'm setting up a trace, 16 point trace, and then I'm setting up the force, the source for current output, and then uh, the sense is going to be a voltage input, 
and then you basically tell it to go line 53 is trigger 16 counts automatically makes all those measurements for you and then all you have to do is read out one string so we're reading out the data on line 64 and it's just one long string then we have to parse that into current and voltage every other number is current every other number is voltage so you need to parse that and then plot it out so i'll i'll post this program on uh, github people want to take a look at it i also have a program that forces a voltage and measures the current so let's take a look at that one. Instead of IV, it's VI. Force voltage, measure current. So this is the red LED. So you can see it's looking like a diode. It's coming out to around 1.8 volts, then turning on. I have it clipping at 100 milliamps. Um, so that's interesting. Let's measure the yellow LED. The yellow LED is turning around around two volts. Measure the uh, green LED, which is the strange one out of the bunch. Let's take a look at that. So it's part diode, part resistor. So it's turning on around two volts, but then it has a straight line here. So this is a, a, a resistive line. So it has a, a bulk, bulk resistance built into the, uh, into the device. So um, it's something that LED people try to get rid of. It's not a good thing to have. It causes heat in the part. Um, you get a voltage drop in the part due to resistance, it adds a bunch of heat. So you try to get rid of that. Also changes the, it goes from two volts up to three and a half volts for the, uh, for the voltage, so it's not acting like a very nice diode. And let's final finish up with the uh, with the blue LED. So. Okay, so the blue LED is a nice diode. It starts around two and a half volts, three volts, and it goes up to uh, 3.7 volts, something like that. So, yeah, much higher voltage because of the gallium nitride. Anyway, uh, I thought you'd enjoy looking at uh, some some uh, semiconductor characterization curves um, uh, using a uh, Keithley 2400. Hope you enjoyed that.